previous lecture we talked about the particle energy field and uh, I described the components of the particle energy field and uh, what are the particle energy fields which uh, normally we talk about and our interest is to understand how the particle or the geometrical is going to behave in these electric fields. And this is where we also talked about you know possibilities of different new concepts which have to be researched and applied in day to day life. I will henceforth I will move on on more focused areas of uh, environmental geomechanics and particularly the uh, waste. The context is like this that uh, waste is also created by human beings and uh, hence human beings are the best species which should be utilizing the waste which they create. And if this happens, uh, this becomes a zero discharge concept which is being uh, you know enforced by most of the industrial units where they say it is a zero discharge unit, nothing comes out of the industry, everything is consumed there, everything is recreated there and so on. So, this is becoming a very interesting philosophy that so called waste which was not having any value, how this is becoming a man made resource. And if I can convert any of the waste materials into a man made resource, that would be an engineering or that would be a technology, that would be a very interesting initiative to safeguard the humanity or the mankind against this curse of you know unattended material which is lying on the uh, surface of earth. So, with this in context, uh, the sub topics which I am going to talk about would be the waste generation. Uh, what are the forms of the waste which uh, are normally uh, generated? We will talk about the hazardous waste, we will talk about the non hazardous waste, and then we will talk about the examples and differences between these two types of waste, and then what is the need for characterization of the material because the waste itself is a material. As you must have noticed, I have written this is a man made resource. So, any resource you would like to understand to the precise details before you start utilizing it or before you create the strategy for its utilization. Now, when we talk about the need for characterization, uh, the most important thing is that we would like to uh, talk about the issues which are related to its utilization, its reuse, its recycling and uh, if I can recover some of the precious materials from the waste. So, this is what the complete cycle is. Uh, where the waste is treated as a man made resource and the present day circumstances are like this that uh, there is no way except to treat the waste as a resource material. And this resource could be for infrastructure development, different type of composites development and so on. So, the first thing is that we have to understand uh, what is the generation or what is the source of so called waste. Uh, normally, uh, we do not use the word waste, this is a shift in recent times. Uh, sometime back people used to talk the unwanted material which is coming out of the industries or from the municipal activities as the waste material. Now we say that this is a man made resource. So, the more emphasis is on man made resource rather than the waste. So, nothing is a waste for me in this universe provided I do judicious thinking investigations and then if I develop a uh, approach to utilize it in the most ingenious manner. So, as far as the source of generation of this metal is concerned uh, that is I hope you are aware of mostly it comes out of the industries or the municipalities. So, the material depends upon from where it is getting generated, its toxicity will depend upon that. Normally, it is understood that the industrial waste are going to be more toxic as compared to the municipal waste all right because of the level of activities which are quite different. Another interesting aspect is the waste may degrade in uh, harmless products or sometimes this may also be a harmful product also. Waste could be hazardous and uh, non degradable and sometimes uh, the hazardous waste depending upon their cumulative effect or cumulative different uh, detrimental effects, they might become very, very critical to handle. 
So, these are the four forms of the waste which normally we uh, tend to deal with solids. Good example would be you know any industrial process you take uh, the solids get generated, mine tailings particularly, different types of fly ashes which come out of the system, slags which come out of the system, red mud which come out of the system, all right. Uh, there could be the soil which is disintegrated completely and you are trying to create an infrastructure and somebody has recommended that remove this soil and fill it up with the right material, granular material. Now the question is where to dump this type of soil. So these are the solid form of the waste. Similarly, dredged material could also fall in the category of the solids, whatever you are taking from the out from the water bodies, be it sea, oceans, lakes, whatever you are dredging. Uh, and you are keeping aside, this could be in the solid phase. Liquids are also associated with industrial process, domestic process, sewage sludge uh, could be of any type, it could be industrial or it could be domestic, different type of sludges and sludges normally contain gaseous phase and liquid phase and solid phase, all right. So these are the four situations which normally we have to deal with uh, and uh, so solids, liquids, sludges and gases. And then there could be a combination of all these depending upon the multi-phase system which we might be interested in dealing with. As I said, it would uh, depend upon the source and uh, sometimes the waste may get disintegrated or degraded into harmless products. This concept is now being researched by Arif, my student. So we are more interested into degradability of the materials, geomaterials. And I have been emphasizing since first lecture that you know the practical situation is where the material does not remain as it is always. So modeling becomes very difficult. That means the properties of the geomaterials including the waste materials they keep on changing with respect to time. So this is a new dimension which now everybody is trying to work on. They are trying to see how degradability of the geomaterials, be it soils, be it rocks, be it industrial byproducts, waste products and so on is taking place number one and how to model it mathematically so that it can be employed in uh, day to day life. Sometimes waste could be non-degradable also. Now the question is which one is better, degradable material or non-degradable material? What will be your answer? So this question itself is a uh, philosophical question. It might be having different types of answers depending upon the type of material you are working with. So sometimes we want waste to dis, uh, degrade like municipal solid waste. There is the whole idea of putting into landfills so that it gets disintegrated, degraded and then after 10 years when I come over there, it is all in the passive form, very nice. But you might not be able to convert all the waste into this type of passivated form because they are non-degradable and then the problem lives along with the material for several years. I hope you are getting a feel of this. Sometimes the materials could be hazardous, sometimes the materials could be toxic. So these are the attributes associated with the material which we will be talking about in details. So it is very interesting to understand what are the definitions which people have uh, given for defining the waste as such. So there are several definitions and interpretations. And why I am citing it here is that it gives you an idea about that how abstract and incomplete the definition of the waste are. And hence many of you question that you know what are the research components associated with the subject. So when you start reading these uh, definitions and interpretations, lot of ideas come to your mind and those ideas become a very, very a glaring example of contemporary research. So if you read the first definition which is given by United Nations Environment Program, uh, this being a UN body, their emphasis or their focus is entirely on a different aspect of the waste. So if you read the first sentence that self says waste other than radioactive waste. I hope you are getting a feel of you know why the directly they talk about radioactive waste only. Why? Any reason for this? So let's say always waste are not reactive. So radioactive it starts up like uh, one very reactive words. Why UNEP should be talking about all the waste put together in one class and radioactive waste put in another class? That is the question. All that is fine, 
first try to understand the language. Why UN is more interested in all the categories of waste on one side and radioactive waste on the one side? Obvious reasons, try to understand. Anyway, so waste other than the radioactive waste which by reasons of their chemical reactivity or toxic, explosive, corrosive or other characteristics cause danger or likely to cause danger to the health or the environment, whether alone or coming into contact with other ways are legally defined hazardous in the state in which they are generated or in which they are disposed of or through which they are transported. So, a lot of things have been talked about the materials, alright. Transportation, disposal, utilization, reutilization, combination of different ways interacting with each other, any chemical reaction which might occur in the system, alright, in isolation and in combination. So, I hope you realize that, see this is how you read the text and then you form research ideas. Are you getting this idea or no? That is the genesis of the research. So, when you think about all these issues, uh, then the research develops. So, if you read these words, they, they connote to some phenomena, a process. Is this okay? I think I am trying to tell you how to imagine something which you should be working on in the days to come. So, this is how newspaper headlines might you know bother you and you might start working on those topics. So, materials which are inherently dangerous to the human body or to animals including but not limited to materials that are toxic and poisonous. These are the attributes of the waste which have been uh, talked about, you know they are irritants. I might see you and I might get irritated. So, for me a person whom I do not like might be an irritant, you agree? That could be a situation. So, it is an attribute, it, these type of materials are strong sensitizers. They are strong sensitizers means, what is sensitization? Sweat is one of the sensitizing agents. So, if you are traveling in locals and maybe congested malls, what do you feel? You get sensitized, the smell of the sulphur which bothers you. Suppose a person like me walks through a fish market, I know many of you won't get sensitized, but a person like me will get sensitized because I normally I am a vegetarian. But those who are not, for them there is no sensitivity. But those who are, they get sensitized just by seeing, just by feeling or just by smelling and so on. This could be flammable also. I think we have talked about these issues in the previous discussions that uh, many times it happens that the waste in the landfill under certain conditions of chemical activity or environmental temperature and pressure might become flammable. A good example would be different type of oils or the hydrocarbons which are lying in the landfills and when peak summer comes, you know, there is something known as their flash point index or there is something known as vapor pressure, they may catch fire. And once these materials catch fire in the landfill, the landfill system is going to become unstable. Then we could have explosions also because of fire or vice versa. There could be a fire and there could be explosion or there could be explosion and there could be fire. So, I am sure when you were a kid, maybe 10, 15 years back, uh, when the Iraq war took place and lot of Indian companies, they brought this scrap from Iraq to India, particularly the steel scrap. So, the chances were that when they brought it and they were smelting this material, there were un unexploded bombs also in the, in the scrap. And when they put it in the furnace, their whole industry got blasted, particularly this happened in Delhi a lot, you must have read about this, no? So, I mean this is something which directly influences the society, alright. This is a waste material from another country which I thought that I will carry along with me to my country and I can flourish and ultimately what happens? There were some unexploded shells, live shells and the moment you put them in the furnace, they exploded, alright. They could be infectious. So, many times the attribute of the waste is that they are infectious either by themselves or when 
this material comes in contact with some other material. So, this is a potential source of transmission of disease to humans, domestic animals or wildlife, all right. So, these are the attributes which uh, normally we talk about, this could be radioactive also. The waste could be radioactive material which I have been discussing. So, sufficient radioactivity and uh, it so happens that nowadays because India is becoming a atomic major, uh, we have to establish several atomic waste disposal sites so that our atomic program goes uninterrupted and this is a lot of uh, association of geotechnical engineers has to be and I think I have discussed about these issues in earlier classes where uh, the question was how to isolate the radioactive waste from the geo environment, how to dispose it, after disposal how to monitor what is happening in the geo environment and so on. So, these are beautiful examples of why environmental geotechnologist should be very active in today's world. Pesticides, so the more and more agriculture you are trying to have in the country, the more and more issues we have discussed about this. So, more and more fertilizers, more and more pesticides and ultimately either this goes to the plants which is known as plants uptake capacity or sometimes the soil itself might get deteriorated because of application of pesticides and fertilizers, particularly chemicals and hence people are nowadays talking about the organic fertilizers. So, I am sure you can imagine now different types of situations which might occur in the society, a farmer would be having a different type of issue associated with farming and hence production of the waste products as compared to the guy who is coming from industry and he or she is facing another type of problem, but the magnitude and the type of the problem remains safe, same. 